Collectively, they represent more than 4,000 years of anthropological history in Trinidad. Celebrating the Trinidadian persons of Indian origin who are over the age of 90. They are survivors of pioneering plantation workers who were shipped to the British colony towards the end of the 19th century, mainly from North Indian states of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, and a few came from the south. Celebrated as the fruits of migration in a land where others had long before found a space under European colonization. The initiative is inspired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's dynamic outreach to the Indian diaspora and endorsed by Foreign Minister Srimati Shushma Swaraj, who penned a special letter of congratulations to this extraordinary Girmitya group of PIOs, who despite accepting English as their native language, have kept close to their heart fundamental aspects of Indian custom and traditions. During the exercise, over 110 elderly persons over the age of 90 were identified, of which the High Commissioner and officials visited over 60 homes. Each celebrant was given a Khadi shawl that was specially made for this purpose and gifted by the craftsmen of India to facilitate their Trinbegonian brothers and sisters. The one belief I hold dearly to my heart is to celebrate our elders while they are living. In my experience and interactions, the elders here are living long because they have just for living. They have a loving family and abiding faith in God. Who advocates that Indianness is not demonstrated only through food and attire, but the values that define who we are. One of the most important, he said, is family bonding and respect for elders. One common feature amongst most of the elderly is that most of them are in good health, minus age-related ailments. They are positive towards life, have loving family, and have worked very hard in their life. Most despite being cane field workers, deprived of education due to poverty, have ensured their children and grandchildren receive education and have proper values in their upbringing. There is no contradiction in being a proud, loyal Trinidadian citizen and maintaining their Indian heritage and identity. An exemplar of such devotion and sacrifice is Siu Narayan Singh, whose children are respected professionals in law and medicine. Unquestionably, Trinis to the bone, but ancestral closeness kept India burning in their hearts through cultural and religious expression. You are our greatest wealth. You are our greatest pride. On behalf of the Sanatan Dharma Mahasava, all our pundits and all our teachers and principals, to say how very proud we are. I really feel great, tell you the truth. <laughs> because living quite here in the bush here, and I had that amount of high education, and a person like that who come here, he say, Bare bhaga manustan payo. Blessed that I have a human body that I get to meet some of them. Like that, you know. And then he come just like Ram, went to Seuri house. Oh, Seuri house. So this commissioner from there come to my house. I feel so great about it. 
Dental surgeon John Barrett has a different experience that links him to the India of his grandparents and a moment he'll never forget when he first visited. But the most important thing that is in my mind that I'll never ever forget, Nehru made a statement in Parliament that here are the people whose parents migrated from the Caribbean island and they were coming back to their forefathers' land. And we were all students in Bombay. I would imagine it was a hair-raising moment for you. Well, I, I, my blood just boiled to know that here am I in Bombay. And the Prime Minister has acknowledged those who had left India and gone to do what they did. And we were coming back as the third generation. That was a stepping stone in my life. It's one of the things I'll never forget. Centenarian Hira Sadhu is also proud of his inherited traditions that linked him to the dharti mata of his village, especially during rice harvesting. What, when the people are not planting rice, this again, when they, they had jata, you know jata, mm -hmm. to grind, this again like that. And they have some of that. They have some from Biha. Biha. And they put it in. And Kulsum Mohammed will never forget the day High Commissioner Bishwa Dib Day and his staff visited Hashagwana's home. I want to thank the High Commissioner for coming home here by me and um, thanks very much for inviting me for the function. And she had a special message for India's Foreign Minister. Madam Minister, thank you very much for this letter and I appreciate it. It's only the start of a continuing initiative by the Modi government to embrace the survivors of another crossing from the Indian subcontinent, who are devoted to their nationalism but culturally imbued to their ancestral roots, thankful that they are remembered in this way. You know, Indians first came to the island in 1845 as indentured immigrants. Among them, the grandparents of Nobel laureate V.S. Naipaul, who was one of the success stories of that migration, which historians described a second tranche of human slavery. But notwithstanding the drudgery and turmoil, they ensured that succeeding generations that now make up the largest ethnic group in Trinidad and Tobago benefited from the values they planted in the sugarcane soils of their adoptive homeland. To their inherited Indian values, the Trinidad PIOs would add their own values and principles to create, in the passage of time, what social scientists called an indigenous hybrid culture. From Port of Spain, Trinidad, this is Gideon Hanuman Singh. Thank you for watching.